Hi pilots and ground crew. This is a don't try this at home video. If you do this modification and it busts your receiver, do not complain to me. In fact, first thing I'll say to you, do not do this. There you go. Do not do it at all. So I'm covering myself in case somebody takes out a 40, 50 quid, whatever receiver, splits it up and it's knackered. Right? Not my fault. <laughs> it's one of them things, it's up to you. I have and it works perfect and I'm very happy, but the rest is up to you. The bottom line is it's uh, taking, for want of a better word, a square peg and fitting it in a round hole or a round peg fitting in a square hole, making somewhat big, smaller. So, you've had me disclaimer to cover my own ass, and uh, here's the video. Thanks for watching, and cheers. Hi guys, well, if you use one of these, uh, for Tiber radio, or maybe a different maker model, but I use for Tiber, so, if you use one of these to fly your mini quads, right, you will probably have to use one of these. Right, unfortunately, as you can see, they are quite bulky. The receivers, they are quite bulky to get inside a mini quad. So how do you get that? in a tiny little mini quad. They'll fit inside a standard 250 side quad no problem and obviously your planes and everything else but if you want it in a little mini quad how do you get it in? Well you do that. As you can see it's a hell of a lot thinner and a hell of a lot smaller. Right so how did I do it? So to start with I'm not going to go through the full thing, I've took some photographs and I'm not doing another one because there's no need to. But to start with you have to remove the casing very carefully. There we go. Right. Now you're probably starting to get the gist of what I did if you compare both. Now we've got it out of the casing, what you need to do is very carefully unsolder all them top pins and pull them out. I've got some photographs, hopefully while I'm speaking to you they'll be popping up if I remember to do them. Once you've unsoldered all the pins, very carefully, I, don't, I hope you can see that white line beneath the bottom S-Bus 3 pins and the top connector pins. Well if you follow that white line with a sharp knife and gently score it, then take some pliers or some cutters, pliers or some cutters and gently cut along the white line. If you go below or across you're going to start interfering with the other circuits and you'll kill your S-Bus. But when you're finished it should look something like, well, this. And then it's a case of wrapping it in some heat shrink, making sure you can still get at your bind button. I've just cut a little piece of the heat shrink away. Plug it into your model and plug your S bus in and you are off and it takes up a hell of a lot a, a hell of a lot less space than a full receiver would so I hope this helps and as I said there should have been a few pictures while I was talking so thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time cheers <laughs>